And we're back on audio, ladies and gentlemen. Just make sure we're all good and clear. And I will bring us back on webcam. Hi! What's up? How's my bitches? Alright. Cool. So, bottle of wine. Well, that might be the uh, appropriate adult choice. So I'll sit and have a civilized glass. Oh, excuse the mic. Uh, civilized glass while we watch this broadcast. Now, depending on the quality of the broadcast, this may actually be like the only glass of wine I have. The shitter of the broadcast, the more this bottle is going to get emptied, I imagine. Pop you down there. Out of the screen. So we are waiting. Why are we waiting? We are suffocating. Alright, shouldn't be too long now. What was that? At White Coat PXG? Who's White Coat PXG? <laughs> Let's find out! On to the Twitters! Da -da -da -da. Let's see who is White Coat PXG? Search Twitter, White Coat. G. Ah, right, that's who it is. Live cast. <laughs> so they're doing captioning live for this. That makes sense. I think every day I've caught it like glimpsingly at the bottom, so I'm kind of hoping to actually like see it properly. So I couldn't see who it was on Twitter properly. Fair play to them for actually being um, there to live. Oh, it's score underneath these videos. Yeah. That's good wine. <laughs> That's actually damn good wine. Pinot Grigio, don't you know? Yes, indeed. Wait, 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 wait sit down and have a... <laughs> I'm loving these little messages, though. Lindsay with... Uh, let it come up on screen for a little bit longer. White Coat Cap XG. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to actually like message them now. My code cap XG and <laughs> white cope cap XG. Well hey, we see you! <laughs> Rocking the PSX experience. Fair <laughs> <laughs> play to them. <laughs> Get their advertising out while everybody's sitting here, like enraptured and waiting for the show to start. Oh, man. See, at the same time, is I've got a feeling that if I'm watching this and then I start seeing the captioning go up underneath, it might actually kind of explain to me why. So, like, I might, I might, I might need to refresh the stream or something to be able to actually see what's being seen. So, I'm I'm thankful for them to be in there, but also the fact that uh, Stacy, fair play, D Stacy, it's good to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hope you're watching. Hope you're watching the show yourself. I need somebody to actually do my captioning. I might get in touch with you guys. It'd be really helpful. Uh, to be honest, majority of my audience can't hear what I'm saying because I say it too fast on occasion. So, um, are you any good at uh, fast speed translations, or do you like do playback uh, odd live, like at half speed, so that you kind of do it like a little bit delayed afterwards? I think your I think your system should probably cover for that kind of a uh, speed speed reading or speed voicing in a way. The only problem is it all becomes one giant mumble for me. Okay, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. We're actually what? Three minutes over time. So are we live? I'm going to go out of this chat stream and come back into it here. No, we are still exactly where we were. Hmm. Right. Interesting. Can look here to see if anybody's commenting on the fact that the show has not started yet.
Hey, here we go. Awesome. So we're going with a montage on the beginning of our second day. Awesome. It sounds very quiet. Are they building up the song, or are we just kind of getting a very low audio version? So the ah, uh, they like very much as a showing like ah, oh, Windjammers, woo! <laughs> um, we're seeing a lot of uh, games that we got announced yesterday. Um, that looked like Uncharted content actually with Nathan Drake. I'm not as fussed on that. The uh, Uncharted without Nathan Drake would be fun. I would like to see a standalone story that kind of includes that. But I'm not quite as intrigued by the idea of actually seeing more of Drake. So, live cast day two. What we got? Welcome back, everybody, to Anaheim. We are at PlayStation Experience Day 2, and we've got quite a show for you today. I'm joined today by uh, Meredith, my good friend Meredith Molinari, and Deej from Bungie. We're going to get into a segment with him talking about Destiny shortly. Uh, we do oh, have, man, uh, I'm really disappointed in that. Today. We're going to be talking about Horizon Zero Dawn. We're going to have kind of funny <sighs> it's here. It's panels. We're going to have a great panel on accessibility. Um, but I panels. To talk about, uh, the this is exactly what I said previously. Panels were right, right, stuff that you can actually watch at any Time. This information could be truncated down. What, what, what was your favorite part this isn't a showcase. Oh, man, you were early man. In I mean, really disappointed. You get out into the world and hang out with, uh, you know, like, I'm glad I actually did do the recording games, of the first episode uh, or the first day. I posted that around. Awesome. But um, yeah, this uh, is this isn't uh, what I'm up the, for. I'm not I'm not up for sitting watching through and listening to these guys talk about a lot of stuff. Go away, go away, go away, go away. And we'll just play a little bit of audio over the top while I look at these guys. Um. Of course, this is going to be the basis of the PlayStation experience. I'm imagining that there must be some kind of like sign-off, but that's not going to be now. I thought they might have actually done like a, a top of each day kind of thing, but no. We've got um, developers kind of sitting down talking about their work, and I fully fucking I love and respect the guys who actually have to come out and do this uh, promotional stuff. But um, it's it's I don't want to talk over them. If you guys want to see if you guys want to see these guys talk, then I. I highly recommend you go and check them out on the stream and listen to the panels. Of course, you can always watch all of the panels that they have in segment form afterwards on... Uh, they're on the PlayStation main YouTube channel. Like, they all put them up online. As you can see them up here. I mean, I can just point them out to you. They have them pretty much all here in their uploads. So, do you know what we'll do? Huh. I'm trying to think. Is there any trailers that didn't go up? Alright. So, what we're going to do instead is we're going to actually watch trailers that are up for games that were in the PlayStation experience that didn't get full trailers in their own way. So um, things like this, like Crash, uh, Insane, Last of Us Part 2, Uncharted, these were all trailers that we saw during the live performance, but we didn't see things like our Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom or uh, what, else in, what else is in here we're taking a look at? King of Fighters 14 update. Um, ba -ba -ba. Parappa the Rappa full trailer. Full trailer for Persona 5, yes. So we'll go through a few of these and try and uh, determine what we can get out of them in terms of like uh, what, what I can remember from games that have actually been released and a little bits and pieces of my ideas of uh, what we'll see in the games that have never been out before. So uh, we'll try that to see this to see to see of the context for um, for this video, which was the intention was actually like to do trailer kind of run uh, like a sh the same as the showcase was on the yesterday's broadcast so let's uh chill that a bit out there like spring that audio down that stopped it a little bit too quickly <laughs> whoopsie um i need to know how to grade my audio a little bit better so um yeah let's take a look and listen to a couple of these trailers so we'll start with ultimate marvel's capcom 3 which of course is a four-year-old game now it, like four five four 2011 2012 2012 i think but it's obviously been away from the uh, online store for a couple of years. Uh, people noticed it disappeared in early 2014, late 2013. And it was assumed that it was something to do with licensing. I think I think it was Marvel were pulling back licensing on a lot of games and then they weren't being re-released again. But um, of course the game already existed. So I'm assuming with the announcement of the new one that Capcom have a new deal, this is getting released and updated for a PlayStation 4 uh, style or design. Sure. 
the ultimate fighting game returns? I don't know about that. So yeah, that's right. There's a lot of characters added into this from it being Marvel vs. Capcom 3, the ultimate version. So we've got things like She-Hulk, Iron Fist, Nova. In 1080p, 60fps. Locked. Now, this game looks blistering in pace. Mike Hagar? I don't even remember that. Or Rocket Raccoon? Shit, man, there's a lot of characters in the site that remember being part of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah, all DLC content. Whoa! Dormammu? He's actually a fucking playable character? I think I remember Thor being there. Is that Taskmaster? Shomagura! Oh man, I haven't seen you since the first one. And Jill Valentine wasn't that? Like blonde Jill Valentine, like a Resident Evil 5 Jill Valentine. Maximum Spider! Energy attacks. Nice. Uh, Love of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, available now on PlayStation 4. That's pretty cool. <laughs> There's a lot of actually, a lot of gameplay in that. That's actually um, a lot of fun for somebody who's actually into 2 fighters. Um, I, I, I had to say, whenever it was originally um, released, it, it felt like the same as Tatsukuno vs. Capcom. It didn't feel like there was actually as much depth to the, the Ultimate or the Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And it felt there was a, bare, a fair bit of cheese going on. You could actually cheese characters quite well. Um, I'm sure that was rebalanced for Ultimate as best as they could. But uh, it's the same problem that they had with Street Fighter versus Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which um, I don't, I don't, I think it's an online competitive play. It got completely and utterly whomped really quickly because there was like unbreakable combos and uh, like horrible kind of like uh, frame glitching in some of the characters that allowed them to get away with like really super short cancellations. It, uh, I'm sure it was like tournament play was banned on certain characters, but it's still, you can't stop that whenever people are playing online. That takes a lot of people out of the game or out of the experience. So what is our next trailer we're going to look at? We're going to look at a, a small update. Since we started with the 2D Fighters, we might as well do this as a segment. We're going to do the King of Fighters 14, and they've done a recent update. And I've heard about this because there was people complaining about the, the visual fidelity, and this might be either because of the PS4 Pro or just the game needed it. So let's see what they made the comparisons with uh, for the update of it. SNK! So, I played the demo on King of Fighter 14. Um, I liked it, but of course it felt a little bit... It felt like the depth wasn't there in a way. It didn't look as pretty as I thought it would. Okay, so that's what it is. It's made for visuals, and they actually have... They've layered a number of shaders and textures onto the game. Well, that's pretty cool. The other characters do look a little bit more lived in. They felt so plasticky in the um, demo, even whenever it's playing it. Well, new colors. That's fun. The palm swaps, man. You can't really ask too much about that. But uh, King of Fighters 14, if you're in the King of Fighters series, it's a good game. It's not a bad King of Fighters game, but it reminds me so, so much more of King of Fighters Maximum Impact than it does any of the other King of Fighter games that ever came previously. But um, if you've never played Maximum Impact, it was the PS2 first attempt 3D series of King of Fighters. Kind of around about the same idea as uh, Street Fighter EX plus Alpha that was out at the time, which was uh, another 3D fighter, but with Street Fighter characters, um, which came out a fair bit before that. This was actually like well and well lit into the PS2's life cycle. Um, I like Maximum Impact. I actually enjoyed the game. I thought it was actually pretty enjoyable. So yeah, it was... Let's let's see what the update does to the game. I don't think it balances too much mechanics. It is literally a graphical improvement over many other things. Um, competitively, it wasn't that bad. So let's take a look into another game type. So we're going to take a look into Parappa the Rappa, remastered on PlayStation. Uh, we've played the demo. You've seen me playing the demo. It was short as fuck. How are they going to sell that to people on idea alone? But by looking at this, it looks like they've got a parent sitting with their children showing them how to play it. Yeah, it's the dude growing up and he's playing the same game again. Now step on the gas. Step on the gas. When I say boom, 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 you say the cheese, the cheese involved. In between. Come on, let's jam. Step on the gas. In 2017. Boom, boom, boom. You say bam, bam, bam. And he's sitting with his sons and the Gerald and Jam. Now, 4K. 4K two dimensional graphics. Door, you know, I gotta go. So yes, open up, you know. In the rain or in the snow. In the rain or in the snow. It's all in the mind. Do 
this may use a mic. I haven't completed that level yet. So the demo available today of the first level of the game. Um, that's this was the bit that intrigued me. The fact that they haven't they haven't shown anything, but they have announced Patapon and Loco Roco. So I'm assuming this is actually like a package deal kind of thing they're planning to do. Um, in future, if all three games were in a package, Patapon would be the one that actually wins out for me. That's actually the game that would be of value in that package of three. Parappa the Rapper means nothing to me. I don't have um, a large uh, personal connection to that game. Um, but Patapon, definitely. That was a game I enjoyed the hell out of whenever I was playing a lot of portable gaming in the early days with PSP. I, I remember. I remember my big PSP. I also remember my PSP Go. Not many people actually still played with those, but um, yeah, that, that's the reason why I have Patapon 2 and 3 digital, because of the Go. Because I enjoyed it, and then I had the Go, and then I was like, fuck, I can't put any discs in this fucking thing. So, uh, Wipeout was of course announced, and they showed that same trailer, so we're not going to do that one. <clears throat> Persona 5, now available to pre-order on the store, has been out in Japan for two to three months now. And uh, oh, I've, been, uh, I've been sorely tempted by other people I know who speak perfectly fluent Japanese to actually like you're going to give the games worth it and you can play you can play it without actually knowing you've but Persona to me has always been the story and the mechanics never really that much cared about I love seeing what they do with the characters and I've loved the the whole Jungian psychology of the mass that we the mass we wear Wendy metaphorically speaking uh, the masks we wear as uh, as people to the public and to the private and I like that entire concept I love that idea I'm curious about how this applies in because even in the preview series, the preview animation they did of Persona, the actual reasoning why people are actually good or bad, depending on their Persona, uh, well, what they try to deny of themselves, is actually related to crime and punishment more in this. And I'm going like, ah, this is thought crime. Like, this is actually planning and preparing and actually committing crimes. Meanwhile, it's not about knowing yourself. It's about knowing that you did something morally wrong. Be punished. So let's see what the story trailer can, because that's what I already think it is. Let's see if the story trailer compi like compounds this for me. Which, to be honest, with a guy behind bars, it's implying this. At least there's drug reference in blood and partial nudity. What's the matter? Are you simply going to watch? So the big announcement with this game was that the reason why it's being delayed is due to um, the inclusion of Japanese and English uh, audio track. Thou art I. Persona! Call upon my name and release thy rage! It's time. Wow, it does look pretty though, I have to say that. Cool. Yeah. Are you a transfer student? Please but keep it doesn't a seem to be, um, don't let him cause any trouble outside. That massively compared to too bad. different from the last one. Hurry up, we'll be late. Are you really a bad person, as the rumor says? The world is not as it should be. It faces an inevitable, utter ruin. However, mankind is said to hold the power to overturn even the most dire of predicaments. Personas are the strength born from one's heart. No matter what okay. it takes. I will bring you to justice! I can feel it. So far, it this hard. is awesome! Now that I got this power, it's time for payback! I'm assuming they're actually like really, really focused no on more the holding back. default persona that you're receiving. The one all in on this plan is the only choice the we can. I wonder who they'll bring justice to next. It's not just Japan anymore. This whole the fantasy whole world's thing, waiting um, to see the Phantom Thieves' next actually... move. Because uh, it showed them actually being literal, actual thieves, like kind of like preparing a crime, preparing like a robbery. I don't know if that's going to be like what your nighttime activities are outside of school. Because normally, with the way the split of the Persona games is, uh, half of it is your school time, half of it is your own time, and you do with it as you wish and you please. But um, I don't know. Is that, is that is that what they're going to do with the Persona games now? Are they going to are they going to keep that separation? They're going to keep the the school world and the uh, dungeon world and uh, and then actually have a third place where they're actually doing their crime world as well, so that their personas are actually not just their personas. They have a persona of a persona that is actually the Phantom Thieves. That I don't know. I'm I'm taking guesstimates and ideas on the context. Like uh, if you guys are interested in the Persona series, feel free to comment underneath and tell me what I got completely wrong out of that. Because from that trailer, all I got was just more confirmation of what I saw in the Persona pre-series that's available on Crunchyroll. 
Which, by the way, you can also uh, get in contact with me and you will receive a two-day pass for the Crunchyroll system without any advertisements. So make sure to try it. Premium Crunchyroll. Ad-free. <laughs> Fucking paid product placements. They're free. I'm paying for the damn thing, so you get to use my free passes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That was Persona 5. I, I might break that into a wee segment on its own just talking about Persona 5. So if I, if I did do that, then there will be a subscribe button up there you can hit or you can grab all their videos over on this other side because it will be in the wee side bit. But um, hope you've been enjoying the PlayStation Experience videos I've been doing so far. <laughs> so uh, I will see you all in the next episode. And back to the show. <laughs> I don't know if I might. I don't know if I'm going to break these up because I don't like the idea of actually having these like micro segmented trailer bits to throw up. But um, I think this is actually probably the way we're going to have to work this rather than actually doing like one long show. If I do the one long show, then I hope you guys are enjoying watching through these trailers with me because like this is literally all we can do whenever the experience itself has. Uh, gone to the live cast uh, developer format. If you want to watch developer panels, feel free to do them. They're available on the PlayStation uh, YouTube channel page. They'll all be available after the show anyway, so I'm, I'm not too concerned about getting gleaning information from developers, which they're being pretty much told they can't say X, Y, and Z, so the promotional stuff is already out of the way. Uh, right, we'll move on to Rain World, which uh, obviously got shown as part of the montage of games whenever they were to explain, like, this is the lightning round kind of stuff of PlayStation Vita and a bunch of stuff. So Rain World deserved a little bit more time. It deserved to be shown with uh, its own, in its own space, I personally think, but it's in there as a third-party kind of indie developer game, so it got into the indies bundle. So let's take a look at Rain World and see what um, what you guys get out of the experience, because I've already seen a fair bit of material on this. Because it's an adult swim game. <laughs> In this alone world, there's a little sperm. <laughs> the, the Adult Swim games are amazing as a series, like as, as a development kind of like publisher, they really are grabbing some cool little artistically interesting and mechanically fun games. This reminds me a fuck ton of another world of um, the flashback of, was it Alone in the Darkness? Uh, a lot of those games, or Abe's Exodus, Abe's Odyssey even in a way. Um, Exile's End, which uh, we've uh, covered here on the channel. <laughs> the guy rain looks damn dangerous, so you have to get into safety before it. But yeah, uh, it it's... A cute little character moving through a world of disaster and pain. It's limbo, it's uh, inside, it's surreality full of insects. Like, this looks interesting to me. It looks beautiful and feels quite meditative while also extremely frustrating. I have um, no qualms about recommending this just flat out as a gaming experience. I also have shown to have a pretty decent pedigree, so I'm sure this game will go reasonably far. Uh, although we will have to wait until 2017 for its release. So that's all it is. Yep, that was Rainbow. Not much I can really say about it, but I, I knew about this game before it came uh, before this trailer came out, but you did catch a glimpse of it in uh, some of the promo materials that came out for PlayStation Experience yesterday. So, Dreadnought, a free-to-play game that will be coming out soon. Uh, I talked about that during the broadcast for yesterday, so we covered that. Absolver I covered, which I, I'm really interested in seeing this game. But I've already covered it in yesterday's one, so we'll skip that. Next, Machina, Danganronpa. Yakuza. I don't know. I'm thinking, Yakuza is actually, like, I could do a video about this, but I recommend you check out my gameplay of Yakuza 6 that's already available on the Japanese PSN. The, the trial version is already out for anybody to play, which opens up the kind of the very beginning of the game, explains kind of what's going on, but in Japanese. So obviously you don't get to a lot of context for that. <laughs> um, as soon as the English version is available in the Hong Kong store, I will play through probably the trial of it as well. So you guys can get a context of it. But um, yeah, it's I don't. whenever I download the trial, it downloaded a 40 gig game. I'm imagining that pretty much the trial is just a lock that stopped me from going any further. It is full game experience. It's actually available there. So um, if you want to give it a try, do expect a long download, but it's it's enjoyable. It's fun. You get to go, you get a little plenty of time with the uh, action combat and very little with the story, which is probably um, a better twist off because a lot of those Yakuza games start with long, long, long bits of narrative. Even this one's quite long, but the Yakuza series has well known for 
going well into detail, long conversation between characters. So if you, I would love to play the game series on the channel, but I would need to get, I would need you guys to ask me to play that on the channel because um, it's a, it's a time commitment and I don't, I'm not going to skip cutscenes in it because there's a lot of actual interesting stuff going on there. It's not action game, action game, action game, action game. It's a lot of watching stuff and watching somebody talk and a lot of watching people talk in Japanese with subtitles. So yeah, that's a game that I would love to play. I've got, I've got everything from three to five on PlayStation three and I have one and two on PlayStation two. I'd play the hell out of these games. So you get yourself knowledgeable for six coming out. But that's only on the request of the audience. That's the only reason why I would do it. So we'll move on to uh, Mother Russia Bleeds, which is now available. It's out in the stores. You can buy this now. You can go buy it in the store, play it now. Or we'll take a look at the trailer. <laughs> Mother Russia Bleeds has been uh, around for a while. We've seen the trailer for this popping up uh, over a number of times. It is uber violence for the point of uber violence. It is scrolling beat em up with a animated kind of cartoon aesthetic. Like, a, like we're chatting like Todd McFarlane's Spawn series kind of aesthetic. Western anime aesthetic, you know, and it is, oh god, it's perturbing. So, so wrong in a lot of places. Oh, you pick one of a number of characters and you beat everything to death. That's what it is, man. Oh no! Bury me Oi! I like this cartoon intro though. This is actually a really, really good way to kind of get an idea of the game. This is not showing a game. Like, oh god! Like, this is tongue and cheek violence. This is like, actual violence. But, um, yeah, that the game actually looks like it's a uh, pixelated kind of like scrolling brawler. Available now from Devolver Digital. Devolver like to go dark. Um, that's perfectly fine. Mother Russia Bleeds looks like it could be a lot of fun. I would love to play it in co op, get a couple of guys in to sit and play it through. Uh, it's one of those games I, I, I probably enjoy the hell out of playing as well. I love Scott Pilgrim. I love, um,. What's it? Phantom Breakers. I love the original scrolling beat em ups of the old days from the old CPS 1, CPS 2 days. Those are the kind of games that I actually like. I enjoyed playing through growing up. Like even Turtles in Time and all those kind of ones. Like the, the world needs more of that, so I'm happy that it exists. So, Destiny Rise of Iron, we got information about that. That's the Christmas experience that they've got coming up. Windjammers. Bye bye, my bae. Windjammers be my bae. My bae. Oh man, I want to know when it comes out, but of course he said it's like coming in 2017, so we've got time to wait. Guaru, Mark of the Wolves. Yeah, so they showed Guaru, Mark of the Wolves title, but they didn't show any of the gameplay. So let's take a look and let me see if I can explain better than I did during the previous video. Oh, I want this game. I do want to play Guaru because um, it's one of those games that uh, I didn't play as much on uh, emulation. Out of all the Final Fantasy, or the Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy series, or the SNK Ups. Is this going to show any gameplay, or is it just going to vote for this? King of Fighters, Maximum Mayhem, Garu, Mark of the Wolves. So yeah, it's good. Garu. Now here we go. Are you okay? Alright! So, uh, Rock Hard is some of these hard to be involved in the first Fatal Fury game. There's a lot of characters in here that are actually generations of previous ones. There's a massive change in the King of Fighters fighting system, uh, guard cancels, uh, dull defenses, uh, parries, that kind of stuff. Cancel is super easy kind of moves. Like, this is actually this is an old ass game, as you can see, but it's fun. It is really, really fun. As a 2D fighter, you can find that you get a lot of kick out of it, but with an online multiplayer mode, it's actually good for you to find carry. I'd, be, I'd recommend playing this, but it's going to be reasonably cheap. It's going to be a retro game, essentially, so anybody who's really into the old series. Oh, that's kind of cool. Illustration and design documents. I mean, that's all that stuff that's unlockable from completing the story mode. Um, it was the new generation of Fuel Fury. It's worth checking out. So, again, Draw Room Market Wolf is now available on the PlayStation Store. Yeah. Oh, you get an original thing to go along with it. Ain't that great. I'm assuming it's got cross purchase as well, so if you buy it on one, you get them both. If, it's, if it does that, then 
that's actually a much more buy interesting buy. I, I like I like the idea that they should be doing a lot more Vita and PS4 cross buy titles because a lot less people are going to buy something that's just for the Vita. Um, I find myself trapped by that for World of Final Fantasy. It's a cross play title, but not a cross buy title. So I had to buy two copies of the same game, and that's um, yeah, it was irritating. But that's only because that's what that, 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 that's that's their model. Like I can understand why they're going like, yeah, it's a completely different game, really. No, it's not. It's the same save game. I can play it between the two of them. Don't lie to me. <laughs> right, so... Um, do you know what actually would have been really good if they'd done with World of Final Fantasy? If they actually specifically had uh, creatures you could have only caught in the Vita version and in the PS4 version, it would have forced people to have both. It would have done the Pokemon thing and might as well go with all the comparisons that Pokemon already had for it. I don't know why I'm talking about World of Final Fantasy being this. It's got its own series. We'll do that. We'll talk about more about that during the World of Final Fantasy series. So, uh, moving on. Near Automata, Weiss... Y S Ys 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 Is that why you pronounce it? I don't know. I like I don't play the series. I don't play the Y series. I just I like I know they exist. I've seen them for years and years. I don't even know how fuck many there are. But it's this one's Y's origin. I'm assuming it's going back to the beginning. I'm just going like how far have we gone forward to go back to one? I mean I remember at least four on original PlayStation. How many have we got? Okay, so let's go back to uh the list. Near Automata looks beautiful, looks interesting. Know nothing about the original Near, um, except for like there was a bit of contention about the gender of the main character in it, and there was like censorship involved. And I don't know. Uh, so Near Automata looks interesting. Go we'll check it out. But um, it's not going on the top of my list. It's uh, it looks like an action RPG, which could be really really fun. But I want to know more about it before I commit to it. So it'll probably be like a pro purchase after the release. So Omen of Sorrow, we saw this as part of the kind of like um. Uh, montage bits together so we only got about 44 seconds of this but what I could see it was like a Mortal Kombat style brawler slash fighter with uh, death and dismemberment moves maybe so let's take a look this looks like an independent title doing the fighting genre which is uh, mostly usually comedy left to like 2D animators out of Japan you know like the, that's how we end up with like Blaz Blues and Guilty Gears and stuff like that so what is this Europe in the 18th century, a place of legends and monsters. Gabriel, the mongrel knight. Dr. Hyde, the twisted alchemist. Iconic characters of myth and lore. Caleb, the lost Samaritan. Ragnagonda, with the thing underneath I didn't have time to read. A fast-paced, high-mobility fighting game. Omen of Sorrow. May one game. Uh, yeah, that looked interesting. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to give that a try. Um, the big thing about having using literary historical characters that are um, in the public domain or context or ideas that are in the public domain means you don't really kind of have a problem whenever you use characters like that. So using Dr. Hyde and the werewolf or whatever else. Fair enough. Uh, I, I can imagine this being actually kind of fun, but um, it looks like a budget title. It looks like a cheaper kind of fighting game. It looks like the kind of thing that uh, I'd probably play through with a... Uh, if there was an actual like, story to it, I'd play through it properly once. But if it's just the arcadey combat, then I'd probably... No, I'd, I'd probably pass it by, just because I don't play all the fighters that ever come up past my way. Strafe. We saw gameplay experience of this on the show, but we're probably going to get an extra minute or so of it. Strafe is a throwback. It's a throwback to the early days of PC shooters. It throws back to at least the Quake era and a little less so Nukem, but uh, definitely Quake. Quake feels like, this feels like a Quake turtle conversion. This feels like a TC made for the original Quake back in the day that is charming and fun in its own way. It's just kill, kill, kill. So let's see what they've got for it. It's a very fast paced from what I could tell or what I could remember. I don't know if this is actually the, this is the gameplay trailer, thankfully enough will literally blow your mind. Right, so yeah, it feels so like I'm looking at a Quake demo from the, in the VR. It feels like I'm playing a Quake demo from really, really uh, early days of like Quake Machinima with uh, customized textures and stuff. Did he just wall jump using a plasma rifle? That's fucking hilarious. So roguelike progression, so you actually can like uh, respawn in. Oh wow. So like, they're really, really, 
basically, <laughs> it really looks like it, it looks, it's Quake and Doom put together with customized textures and models, man. This is brilliant. Ejected Brass looks a lot like TV. What? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if that broken build is like my family is dead. So I uh, got plenty of What the hell did I just watch? That's what the hell did I just watch? The same comment that I have for this. It's um, it, it's the wonderful throwback. And I'm all about like even like it looks like there's a little room for this that look like it's kind of uh, oh ricochet shots. Kind of looks like it's actually left in Doom level or like level design. The best game of 1996. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. It's the best game of 1996 um, in 2016. Great. It, it knows what it is, and appreciates what it is. It got to give you the fucking pipe wrench. It knows. And that's fine. Bleeding Edge Graphics and Gameplay, copyright 1996. Yeah, man. Oh, man. I, I can't question you can't You can't debate their intent. That'll be fun. That will actually be physically fun. Don't know how long you'll get anybody, any young, anybody younger than me to play that really for long periods of time. I don't know. Um, unless they really got into shooters, then they'll understand the historical importance or val relevance of that. Oh yeah, so we're just checking here on the live stream here. What was that actually? Uh, who's that? Running man OSK. Thanks very much for coming to the stream. Man, they need to bring back SOCOM. You know we need the SOCOM game back. <laughs> SOCOM is actually, like, SOCOM was actually something I played back in the PS2 era whenever I had the network adapter for it. Um, played that a fair bit with uh, some friends of mine. Although, there's friends of mine who played a shit ton of that back in the day. Uh, whenever I lived with one of them, but I didn't live with all of them. And they used to play SOCOM, and I think there was another one that was very, very similar in that tactical squad based combat. I think the closest you get to that now is probably the Rainbow Six series, uh, Rainbow Six Siege specifically. Uh, that that pre-planning, preparation, and working through, but um, cooperative campaign doesn't really exist for that sort of thing. So what do we got on the next? We got oh, sizzle reel for PSVR. We're going to skip that one. We're not going to bother. Um, yeah. So yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Don't know anything about this game. Uh, I think it may have popped up during the mm, the mixture of stuff. The uh, the burst. The Montage. Jeez, I couldn't even remember the goddamn name. That's one glass of wine and I'm smashed. That's bullshit. So, uh, Yonder, let's take a look. Crude humor. <laughs> Great. Yonder, the crowd catcher chronicles. Go fuck yourself. My dearest child, it pains me to send you so far away. But I had to be sure you would be safe. At first, the island kingdom may seem strange, full of magic oh, and lovely. fantastic creatures. But you shall find honest people there. Trust in their wisdom and let the celestial compass guide this looks you. Like a, a fairly interesting little kind Have of courage, exploration my child. For one day. You shall find your way home. Why did this have a warning for crude humor? Let's try that again. What? What? Fucking what? Okay, that baffled me completely in some way, shape, or form. Like, I don't know how the fuck Yonder had any crude humor, especially in that way it was displayed. That would actually, that made me feel like it actually like had full throttles fucking pre bit before it. That, that either looks like a fuck up or that was actually just, there's something about that game that I don't know. It looks like it starts like that, but it could end up being what fucking conquers bad fur day. I don't know. But crude humor? What? Fuck that. Okay, moving on, full throttle. Well, we had Day of the Tentacle, we had uh, Sam and Max, we had, uh, what else was actually from the old retro days? Oh, we had um, Grim Fandango. So why not release all of the old point-and-click games at some point in PS4? I don't dislike this idea. I like old point-and-click games. Full Throttle is one of my favorite ones from back in the day. A little bit frustrating in a lot of places. But uh, yeah, have you ever heard of it? You know about this? 
you, you, have, you, have, have you ever heard about this? Do you know about this? Full throttle. Check it out. Make a content and inappropriate for children. It's about fucking bikers. From Double Fine. And from our archives at Double Fine. <laughs> we don't make new games, we just re-release our catalog. Sometimes you just wake up in trouble. Fair enough. <laughs> One minute you're on Redrawn the Redrawn in Adobe right. Illustrator. Not a care in the world. Then some guy in a suit comes along. Neither Next thing I've got you know, a chin that doesn't stop from mine. Rotten. Your gang's gone, and if you don't get on your bike and find them quick, everything you count on to survive could just disappear. When you wake up in a pile of trouble, there's only one way out, and it yeah, usually it starts with a lot of punching. Motherfuckers bust up my ride. Full follow remastered. A new adventure. No, same adventure. All over again. <sighs> Yeah, how much I can really say about that. Uh, Move or Die was recently announced as well. That's a PC game that's actually getting across the PS4. I'm not... I think, uh, well, okay. I'm sure you guys have heard, seen a Move or Die. If you're actually following anything online, you've seen what the premise of it is. It is four-player kind of platform combat. Where you move. Fucking die. Is that it? Oh god damn it. Like, I knew that was gonna be it. I knew it. But like I looked at that saw 24 days and like they're gonna have to do like a really hyper fucking cut between show and like action in that. I knew that trailer was gonna be garbage. Why why did I let myself suffer for that? So Lara Croft Go Empire, they both appeared during the conference, but this didn't. Hand of Fate 2. Now Hand of Fate was on every goddamn sale we've had on the PlayStation Network, especially in the EU for the last six to seven months. Every sale, Hand of Fate was down in price, down in price, down in price, down in price. So it's, it was down to about like two, three pound in the last sale. I think it was like 70% off. So I always get that feeling whenever someone goes that cheap that they've got a sequel in, a, a sequel in their summer on them. They're ready for it. So of course they had Hand of Fate 2. Check it out. Blood and violence, of course. The Empire spreads its influence, exporting civilization and rationalism to the fringes of the known world. The northern clans retreat before them, falling back into the mountains. Yet the heart of the Empire is rotted and impure, filled with the corruption and the spreading influence of crime lords and assassins. All of the pieces are in place, and the game begins anew. Yeah, man. For I have come That's cool. for my revenge. See, I like this actually that it says you're playing against a Dungeons and Dragons style DM sitting right across from you as part of the game whenever you're picking through your decks of cards and your bonuses and everything else. I highly recommend checking out Hands of Fate 1 the next time it's on sale. If you have not bought it yet, buy it during the next sale. It will probably be in the next seal. It has been in every single one so far. Watching its price drop and drop and drop and drop. It's good. If that intrigued you in any way, shape, or form, let me just explain that it's kind of strategy. It's kind of card based. It's kind of randomized. It's kind of roguelike. Put that all together, you have Hands of Fate. You're playing across the board from a guy who's essentially trying to wreck your shit. The bad DM. And then you're just pulling cards that actually bonus up your characters, bonus up your uh, your abilities, bonus up your 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 the events. I suppose the best way to describe it of your progression. Keeping it clean, not giving too many details. But Hands of Fate One, which is available and been available on the PlayStation Network for a while now, will be cheap again. It's down, it's like at fourteen quid now. The next time it's on a sale, grab it, check it out yourself. Surgeon Simulator ER. It's the VR version of Surgeon Simulator. We're not watching that. Starblood Arena. We saw that during the conference. We're not going to cover that. Dino Frontier was in the VR montage, but we got very, very little to look at it. It looked like the um, so the giant cop game that was actually out, or it was going to be out for VR, but um, has a slightly different style. This is a god game. 
but set in the Wild West with dinosaurs. You gotta ask questions, that's all you got. See, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. It's gunslingers and dinosaurs. And this shit could happen, but you just go, uh, get the fuck out of that fight. <laughs> The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, and the dino. The best premise is that you're running the town, you have to protect it from dinosaurs, you have to move the people around. It's a god game. Good idea. I look forward to seeing that coming out. That'll actually be, that'll be a good VR, kind of like people will drop their time into kind of game to build their town to whatever SimCity-esque size you can get to. Uh, that was the showcase. We've seen Vayne and Fallen Legion. Fallen Legion. I don't know. Did we see Fallen Legion as part of the campaign thing? I don't know. Well, let's take a look at Fallen Legion and see what is inside, because I don't know if I ever know this game. Is this from the Odin Sphere people, by any chance? My language and violence. Let's see what we got. It, had been an open secret it really does remind me of Odin Sphere. Had been in slow decline for the last decade. But does it feel like Odin Sphere? Right, so it's card-based combat actively throughout the game. This is interesting. I mean, essentially, it's like you're a runner, but you're actually like pulling cards and making decisions as you move through. And then whenever you attack, it's actually uh, individual skill buttons that are used against combat. So it's not an active kind of like a platform action kind of scroll beam up that Wooden Sphere is. It reminds me maybe a lot more of Banner Saga in a way? But it has like a tiny kind of like far button. On PS4 and PS Vita? Again, looks like a this looks like the kind of game that PS Vita was fucking born to play. This is what it's designed for. Um, obviously it's gonna be on PS Vita. Well, that's if we're not gonna believe you that's gonna be on the PS Vita. But um, yeah, that Fallen Legion looks interesting. In fact, it kinda, well, not really. Uh, dra what was that? Uh, it's not Dragon's Dogma. What's the one that was on the PS Vita that was very, very like Odin Sphere that wasn't Odin Sphere? Was it Dragon's Crown? Yeah, Dragon's Crown. So imagine Dragon's Crown or Odin Sphere, but with a much more uh, turn based combat. That's pretty much the way to describe it. Maybe like uh, Grand Kingdom is kind of like that as well. Grand Kingdom was a fairly decent game. Um, I played a bit of it on one of my Made in Japan episodes a while, a while back. Um, if you want to check it out, you can grab it from the playlist. So yeah, this has been um, the PlayStation conference, PlayStation experience, day two. This is the best I could do for it with um, the lack of real content and the actual show, because they're actually doing the live cast. The live cast is... Now just uh, panel after panel after panel after panel after panel, and I'm not that intrigued in seeing more panels really at this point. Let's take a quick look and just check back in with it to see what it's like and see what they're doing right now. So yeah, exactly, it's what I expected. It's continued uh, panel discussions. So um, yeah, let's go out of that. <laughs> We're done. We are done. Past live streams. Yeah, let's see if there's anything extra special that we could watch or pull from. But no, that's all the trailers that are available for the PlayStation Experience 2016. This has been the second day of it. Um, if there's anything else announced of any import, I will try and get it to you guys as fast as possible. But thank you very much for watching. This has been Passage of Skin doing the PlayStation Experience 2016. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the day one video that went up earlier on today. This will go up shortly after this is broadcast is finished. And um, I will see you all very, very soon. So if you enjoyed what you were watching, you can hit the subscribe button up here, of course, or you can hit something over on this side, uh, one of the playlists that will actually allow you to watch all the stuff that I've been working on here in the channel. And um, I hope for, look forward to seeing you in the subscription list and see you in other videos in the future. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all you dudes in the next video.
Bye-bye.